Hi guys, let's talk about PRP and PRF today. So PR stands for platelet-rich, and the difference is the last letter. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma, and PRF stands for platelet-rich fibrin. Both PRP and PRF are obtained from the patient's own blood supply. That means that they are both natural healing agents used in regenerative medicine. PRP was discovered early on, or we can call it the first generation platelet concentrate. And PRF was discovered afterwards, or we can call it the next generation to PRP. PRP and PRF are amazing treatments for various different fields of medicine. However, we are only going to focus uh, on aesthetic medicine today. So in medical aesthetics, PRP and PRF are great natural treatments uh, for skin rejuvenation. It promotes healing and promotes cell renewal. For example, it stimulates the production of collagen and elastin to treat volume loss. However, it has its limitation. For severe volume loss cases, we do need to combine with other treatments for optimal results. PRP and PRF can also treat scars. Um, it can treat uneven skin tone and texture. It is also a great treatment for hair loss. PRP or PRF injection um, have also been growing in popularity in sexual health and wellness. Um, it is injected into the male or female private part for rejuvenation and enhanced sexual pleasure. Uh, oftentimes you hear terms like O-shot for women and P-shot for men. A PRP or PRF treatment can be done in uh, multiple different ways. Option one is that we can inject uh, the product directly into the skin or body using a needle. Option two is we can use it with a microneedling device. Option three is that we can add them into your mesotherapy cocktail and then using a mesotherapy gun, we then inject a product into your skin. And option four is that we can really customize the treatment combining the different ways of administration uh, depending on the case or the concern that you're trying to target. Let's look at the similarities between PRP and PRF. They are both obtained from the patient's own blood supply. So after a blood draw, uh, the collection container or collection tube will then need to be placed inside a centrifuge to spin and to separate the blood components to obtain the PRP or PRF. And then these are injected or administered into the patient's skin. Another similarity is that they both have the same active ingredient, platelets, which are major components in our blood. Pretty much they are tiny packets and fully loaded with growth factors that are circulating in our bloodstream. And then let's look at the differences between PRP and PRF. PRP is prepared at a much higher time frame than PRF. In simple terms, when we place the collection tube or container into the centrifuge to spin and to separate, it is spinning at a significantly faster speed for PRP and a much slower rate for PRF. Because of the high speed, a lot of the heavier products sink to the bottom of the tube and for lighter materials like platelets and plasma will stay at the top to produce PRP. Because of the much slower spinning speed for PRF, the blood components do not get to separate out as distinctly as PRP. Uh, which means that some or more of the white blood cells and stem cells are being able to remain within the uh, platelet layer, which is then collected as PRF. If you take a look at them side by side, the amount of PRF we obtain after spinning is a lot less than the PRP. And generally, the PRF is a little bit cloudier than a PRP, um, mainly because there's a lot more growth factors and other uh, goodness inside the PRF. Another difference between PRP and PRF is that PRP has an anticoagulant called ACD inside the collection tube, which prevents the blood from clotting too quickly. And inside a PRF tube, it does not contain the anticoagulant. With the anticoagulant, it will prevent the PRP from clotting. So when you first take um, the PRP tube out of the centrifuge, it is a liquid form. And after we inject it into the patient's skin, it stays as a liquid form. 
and then it's starting to release all these growth factors and healing factors right away. PRF on the other hand, because it does not have this anticoagulant, when you take it out of the uh, centrifuge, it is a liquid form. But after injection into the skin, it becomes this gel matrix type of substance. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this gel matrix. The natural fibrinogen in our blood is converted to fibrin by thrombin in the early stages of clot formation. This creates this spongy matrix that activates the platelets and allows for a slow release of growth factors. So this gel matrix substance holds all the growth factors and it's being slowly released into the surrounding tissue. As a result of that, the growth factors are slowly being released over a period of time, uh, usually over the next couple of days or sometimes longer, depending on the case. And knowing that it will turn into this gel, that usually means the practitioners need to move a little bit faster to make sure that the PRF can be injected when it's still in its liquid form. At the end of the day, both PRP and PRF are amazing treatments for various different types of skin concerns. If you're interested in a treatment like that, please go and visit a local uh, medical professional for consultation and to find out what's best for you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment down below to let me know what type of content you want to see next.